Hi guys, so in the new year I thought I would try something a little bit new and try to do a monthly book recap video. So that's what I'm doing here. Also going to be writing about these books on my blog, so if you prefer to just read it instead of listening to me talk for 10 minutes, you can go over there and just read what I thought about these books too. But this is what I read last month in December. The first one I read, which I actually listened to on audio, was Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. And I thought the story was really cute. So it's basically about a grumpy taxi driver who kind of gets roped into carting around this old lady around town. Um, and the older lady has, I think, like dementia or something similar to that. So she's always forgetting things. But she's he starts to realize she's trying to set up her granddaughter um, with somebody for Christmas. And uh, it's just, it was cute. So there's a little romance element, but it wasn't over the top. And it was more just like the beginning of how these two met. It didn't go into like, you know, oh, they fall in love and get married or anything like that. But it was just a glimpse into maybe the start of something, which I thought was a nice way to include a little bit of a romantic element, but not have to cram all that into one book. Um, but it was more just about uh, being with family at Christmas and um, a little bit about this old lady's uh, faith. But uh, even in the book, it says the grumpy taxi driver is supposed to remind you of Luke from the Gilmore Girls. And I was uh, as I was listening on the audio, it did remind me of that. But anyway, it was just a nice kind of cozy read and I enjoyed listening to it in the month of December. Next book I read was A Marriage Carol by Chris Savory? I'm not quite sure how to say his name. So this is a book that probably isn't my usual style of book I would gravitate toward, but I was just in the mood for Christmassy reads, and it was a cute story. It was kind of in the vein of a Christmas carol, uh, but it was about a couple who is having troubles in their marriage. They're on their way to get a divorce, and uh, then they get in a car accident, and this woman um, stumbles out of the car to a cabin trying to find help, and this cabin is like a marriage retreat that's really mysterious and she ends up reliving Christmas's past, present, future uh, with her husband. Obviously by the end of the book things turn around and it ends well. So it was cute and I felt like it didn't get to, um, I feel like sometimes books that are written uh, about marriage troubles can get a little too, um, I don't know, pointed or like they're trying to make a point about how to have a good marriage or something even though I usually don't like reading about troubled marriages in my fiction just because I sometimes find it depressing. This one I think was short enough and um, and ended happy. I felt like it was just a nice story. The next one I listened to, I listened to a lot of books in December. Um, I listened to Last Christmas in Paris by Hazel Gaynor. This one was probably one of my favorite books in December, honestly. It was an epistolary novel, so a novel in letters. There's this girl, this British girl, and her brother and her childhood friend are going off to fight on the front lines of World War One. So she's writing them letters and they're writing her back. And it's just kind of the story of the whole war uh, through the lens of their letters. And then of course there's a little romance element, but it was really sweet and well done. Um, and I just really enjoyed this book a lot. World War One is my personal study project for last year and probably into this year too. So it was really fun to have a novel about World War I to fit into that because there are not that many World War I novels. Next book I read was a reread for me, which was The Two Towers um, by Tolkien. It was still great. It was just as good as the last time I read it, and I just love Lord of the Rings. It's a great series, and if you haven't read it, you should. Okay, then I read um, Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This was an interesting book. So it was kind of like a... Uh, like a YA fantasy slash dystopian kind of story. Um, basically, the society is divided into two groups of people, those who have red blood, those who have silver blood, and the people who have silver blood also have like superpowers, kind of, like superheroes. But the reds just basically work to support the silvers. This is the way the society is structured until there's this red girl that accidentally discovers that she has these similar to the silver superpowers. They try to hide her by basically lying, like the royal family tries to hide her by lying and saying that she was this long last nobleman's daughter kind of thing. So 
she has to kind of play the part as if she was a silver, even though she's a red. There's a little violent here and there, so if violence bothers you, you might not be uh, there for this one. I'm not a huge fan of the main character girl. She comes off a little, like, I don't know how to explain it, like, I guess entitled in a way. I just feel like she's a little bit judgmental, a little bit arrogant. Um, even though she's supposed to be like the underdog, it's not, it's not quite working for me for some reason, and I'm not sure why. I'm not like 100% sure if I'm going to end up liking this character by the end of the series, or if I, if she's going to be one that I really feel like I can root for. Um, it was good. It was really interesting to read. I was sucked into it because I really got caught up in the plot, um, which is fun, but I don't know. I'm not feeling super motivated to pick up the second book just because I'm not like connecting with the main character very much. Next book is um, Deceived No More by Doreen Virtue. And this book is kind of like a testimony book of uh, basically Doreen Virtue is a very popular, best-selling new age author. Uh, but then she um, came to Christ. And it's just really interesting to read her story of how she came out of the new age and turned to Jesus. So I thought it was a really good book, really interesting to hear her experiences and just the different things she went through. And also, um, I loved that the book was really rooted in scripture. Um, she took great care to make sure to explain the gospel and really root her story in the truth of the gospel. Her conversion is kind of gradual, which I think a lot of people experience that where they they start to understand one part, but then it doesn't all come together for them till later. Even though it was kind of gradual, she just does a great job of explaining the gospel and explaining um, repentance and just how she came to the Lord. And I thought it was very well done and I enjoyed it a lot. It was very interesting. So if you're interested in like a new age to Christian testimony book, this one was really good. Next book we read is uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I actually read aloud to my kids. I have never read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory actually. Um, I saw the movie when I was a kid, but I hadn't read the book. So we read the book and then we had a movie night with the movie. And uh, this is another case of where the book is definitely better than the movie. One, it was just more fun. It was fun to see the words written out and see all the quirky little things that you kind of miss in the movie. But I also really liked the book much better because in the book, Charlie uh, is, he wins because he didn't cheat. In the book, he doesn't cheat at all. He's not even tempted to cheat. And he prevails because he had some character, right? Um, whereas in the movie, Charlie and his grandpa do kind of cheat or break the rules in the factory. And also there's that creepy scene in the movie that I totally forgot about that I kind of wish I had skipped past when we watched it with my kids because it was a little creepy. The book is just better. There are a few uh, rude names in the book. So maybe as a parent, you want to be aware of that. You've never read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory like I haven't. But since I was reading it aloud, I just edited those out for my kids. My kids loved it. And they wanted me to read another chapter every time we put the book down. So it was a winner. <laughs> Last book that I read was Raising Men, Not Boys by Mike Viveras. It was like a parenting book. It was geared toward parenting boys. Uh, but I thought that it could really apply to boys and girls very much so, like a lot of the advice would apply to both. I really like this book. I um, am very picky about parenting books just because I feel like a lot of modern parenting books that I've read, especially ones that are a little bit more psychology based, a lot of them that I've read I feel like are just kind of when you boil it down lists of stuff that you should do and stuff that you shouldn't do. And honestly I can't keep track of all that. Some parenting books kind of leave me with this feeling like I'm never going to be able to remember all this. I'm never going to be an adequate parent. I'm going to do this all wrong. I'm going to fail my kids. And it just feels like very overwhelming to me. But this book was not that way. And when, any parenting books that I read, if they're going to like make my list of recommended books, they're going to have to be really rooted in scripture, rooted in the gospel, because our main goal as Christian parents would be to make sure our kids come to know the Lord and make sure they understand our faith. That was the main point of probably the first, at least third of the book. So I thought I gave some great advice for that. And then the rest of the book, it also gave a lot of practical suggestions just for like biblical principles um, and things that we should be focusing on as Christian parents, uh, character traits, things like that to pass on to your kids. So more, it was more big picture instead of these granular little, do this with your kids, do this with your kids, or don't do that, don't do this. 
instead of a bunch of stuff for me to remember like that, it was more big picture. Like, these are the character traits I want my kids to grow to have, and these are some practical ways that I maybe I can encourage that. I should probably write a post or do a video soon about my favorite parenting books because, like I said, I'm really picky, but this one definitely passed muster, and I think it was great, and I think every Christian parent should go ahead and read it, even if you don't have boys. So... And that is it. I read a couple of books in January already that were really good. So I'm excited about next month's video. So definitely stick around and look for that one. And tell me maybe what you're reading in the comments or the best book you read in December. All right. Bye.